a prop rod, really Lexus, a prop rod, and a $67,000 EV. But at the end of the day, if you're buying an EV, range matters more than anything. The theme of this is missed opportunity. Let's call it missed opportunity. So today I'm filming a really quick review, call this a, you know, quick review of the Lexus RZ 450e and definitely have some strong feelings about it. Apologies for the wind and the pollen, but it is Georgia spring in full effect. So stay tuned for probably the main thing you want to know about the Lexus RZ 450e and I think you know what it is. But I want this review to start off on sort of a positive note because definitely I'm gonna provide some negativity about the Lexus RZ 450e. So right off the bat, positive note to start with is the styling. I think this looks pretty good. When you consider that this is based on the stupidly named Toyota BZ4X or whatever, or the Subaru Solterra, this feels like a different vehicle. It feels like its own vehicle. I think it wears the Lexus design language really well to be honest with you when it showed up in the driveway and it's kind of like light blue with the blue and white interior or whatever like check it out in the sort of b-roll that i'm showing you guys right now this was a handsome suv and that is sort of the theme of this review if you had to put it into context of this quick little preview i mean this is barely a review right because we had a very short week with this we were traveling and stuff but the theme of this is missed opportunity. Let's call it missed opportunity. Because when you see this rolling down the highway, it looks good enough inside and out. But let's get to that one thing that you probably wanna know a little bit more about, especially in the real world. Okay, so under the hood here, you can see this is an electric motor. And that is one of the main problems with the RZ is that all of the aspects of being an EV are somewhat compromised. First of all, you get no benefit of front trunk or anything like that. And even in this higher horsepower trim, which has over 300 horsepower, you are compromised because of the 20 inch wheels on range. So let's talk a little bit about this and I'll show you some clips of the charging experience. So if you have the 20 inch wheels, uh, the range is under 200 miles. And I felt that considering that we recently had the Genesis G80 EV, which is fantastic fantastic and showed, I think it was over 300 miles of range, even though Genesis only quotes 282, it showed over 300 at a full charge. This thing, I took it to the same fast chargers and well, here was the result. Off to a good start charging the Lexus RZ. First time I've ever had to wait at this location, but shout out to the uh, idiot in the Nissan Versa here, taking up what could be a two bay spot well done there nissan versa you piece of garbage so you can see here charging the rz i'm only pulling 52 kilowatts on a 150 charger at this electrify america station and it's gonna take me i think it said 55 minutes to get to 100 percent so not super great. Yeah, so you can see here, I got the trunk open, but it's giving me a reading of 55 minutes. So, lackluster. Been charging for 43 minutes. Still has 25 minutes remaining to get to 100%. I'm gonna cut it off here because we're down to nine kilowatts and there's people waiting for the charger, but not super great to be honest with you. Where it's kind of disappointing is all that charging and we're at 175 miles so eh, it's pretty disappointing to be honest with you yeah okay so you can see that that didn't go super well even on an electrify america fast chargers which always seem to kind of underpower uh whatever the vehicle's maximum ability to take charge is that was sort of a long-winded way of saying it doesn't charge as fast as it's supposed to charge in darn near an hour of charging i still didn't have a hundred percent charge and even when i did go home and charge it up to a hundred percent i barely was crossing 
crossing 180, 385 miles. Then, because it's a Georgia spring, we've had some chilly weather and we've had some really warm weather, like today. Today, the temperature is hovering right around 65 degrees. So in that 65 or 70 degree range, this thing maintains its range like you would expect in EV2. It's running the AC, it's got cooled seats, everything's going fine. However, when the weather had a little bit of a cold snap, this thing chewed through its range so fast. I have not had an EV, and I'm not saying this is an exaggeration. I generally like Toyota Lexus products. I, I haven't had an EV yet, maybe on this channel, that chewed up its range as fast as this thing did. I took Hallie on some volleyball uh, practice trips and to the grocery store and just some daily errands, and I went from like, I wanna say 180 miles or so, close to 200 miles when it got dropped off, to like, it was, 90 miles maybe, 85 miles. I mean, it burned through range on that day when it was cold. Um, I don't think it has a heat pump or something like that. Like whatever the problem is, it's gotta be addressed ASAP because in a colder climate, this thing would be literally useless, okay? Down here in Atlanta, Maybe not so much, it's not that bad, but in a colder climate, this thing is severely compromised, okay? So you have range compromises to get the nicer wheels and stuff like that, which is sort of annoying. Um, 300 plus horsepower, like 308 or something like that, pretty good. I think it's zero to 60 in five seconds. Motor Trend might've done it at 4.7. So it's not slow if you put it in sport mode. Um, but then the one pedal driving, I'm not gonna do a whole dedicated driving portion because if you wanna know about the ride handling of this thing, go watch my uh, Lexus RX video that Megan and I made about the Lexus RX plug-in hybrid. Rides very similar to that, drives very similar to that, but it doesn't have a true one pedal feature. and the brake Break handover from that kind of normal braking to the EV braking to the one, well, not one pedal, but you can shift it on the paddle to make it braking intervention more aggressive. It's not as smooth as in other Toyota hybrids or plug-in hybrids. It's it's kind of like, like you're not sure how much you're gonna get of that region, even when it's in maximum region mode. So it feels very compromised in that way, both from behind the wheel and from a charging perspective. And I wanna point this one thing out that Overall, this feels very much like a Lexus. It looks like a Lexus. The interior feels like a Lexus. More on that in a second. But one area, well, two if I'm being honest, I'll point out one here. A prop rod, really Lexus, a prop rod in a $67,000 EV, you're gonna put a prop rod in. In the Toyota, the Subaru version of this, fine, whatever you wanna do. But a prop rod in a $67,000 Lexus, feels stupid, okay? Come on, put some struts in it. Worse than that though, is the charge door over there. The charge door is the fiddliest piece of garbage that I've ever seen. It feels like the charge door on a, well, let's say a very cheap lesser EV or plug-in. It is not befitting of a Lexus. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it has to be motorized. I actually think motorized charge doors are kind of stupid, okay? Just another thing that could go wrong or break for no reason at all. But a fiddly, plasticky, you have to press it multiple times just to get it to open. That's unacceptable in a Lexus. This is a Lexus. This is supposed to have all of the virtues of a Lexus, right? It's supposed to have this impeccable build quality and reliability. That's what we expect out of Lexus. And a charge door that I like literally was pressing all over. I had to, I'm not even making this up. I had to Google, is there something wrong with this Lexus RZ's charge door to find out that yes, there is stuff wrong with the Lexus RZ's charge door and that people have been taking it to dealerships going, why doesn't this thing open when I press on it? I'm clicking it, clicking it, clicking it and the latch doesn't release. I know I'm going on about it, but that's sort of the experience with this car as a missed opportunity. It is a good looking, decently driving and it's got a lot of Lexus's you know, gizmos and gadgets that I generally like but so much about this thing is compromised, and I know that Toyota and Subaru had to kind of rush this thing out to join the EV craze, and it feels like it, but if this got over 300 miles and had a decent charge rate, this would be up there as an incredibly pleasant EV to drive. So let's get back to the positives and take a look inside to see more of where they kind of did stuff right. Okay, so as you can see here on the inside of the Lexus RZ, uh, there's some good positives here. All of Lexus's usual switch gear. I know it's got the electronic door latches that Megan doesn't like. By the way, Megan's not in this video because she actually never drove this car. Like I said, we were all over the place this past week. We actually just got back from New Orleans at a volleyball tournament. So obviously we didn't take this. That would have been a disaster. Um, but we haven't had much time to drive it. I've been the only one who's had time to drive it. Plus with the lower range, Megan hates, hates EV range anxiety. And so I knew that, let's just say this review was gonna take a decidedly negative turn 
if Megan got behind the wheel of this car. So in the interest of not, you know, just kind of shitting all over the Lexus RZ, I decided I'll take the lead on this one and kind of give you at least a little bit more balanced and nuanced review than what she would provide. Um, I think that's fair to say, and I think she would agree. Um, so yeah, the door handles that she doesn't like. Also the head-up display with the steering wheel controls. If you want to see more about that, go watch our other Lexus videos like the Lexus RX. But this thing is fully loaded. You have the Mark Levinson, you know, audio system. You got all the good things, all the good interior materials. I love the sort of fake suede kind of blue material and the soft touch everywhere. Lexus interiors lately have been on a kick of feeling much better than they look. I've seen this in the comments from numerous people that Lexus interiors look kind of boring and dull. And I could see that to a certain extent, but the materials are impeccable. The build quality is impeccable. The steering wheel feels fantastic, okay? So the leather and the fake suede feels great, okay? There's no doubt about that. 14 inch usual infotainment system. I am not a fan of Gidgetsy Gasmo, Gidgetsy Gasmo, Gasmo, but um, sort of overly done EV electronics, okay? I think Hyundai and Kia and Genesis do it well by giving you a little bit more kind of graphics and stuff like that without going totally overboard. But on the flip side, you got Lexus's great 14 inch infotainment system. Toyota and Lexus's new infotainment system is just awesome, just so good. But I'm not a huge fan of Lexus's gauge cluster, and here it's even more basic and boring. And I'm like, but you're driving a full EV that doesn't have the best range numbers and stuff. I feel like having a more interactive range thing and, and giving you more of that kind of like map data and stuff like that in the gauge cluster might do a little bit to alleviate owner's range anxiety with this thing, especially if you get this model and it has less than 200 mile range. I think that would really help give people peace of mind. But overall, this interior looks really nice. Oh, by the way, the Magic Sky Roof, super cool. I love the Magic Sky Roof. I think that's such a neat feature. Check out me playing with it in these videos and turning it on and off. I thought that was super cool. Hallie said it was pointless because it lets in light when it's frosted and it lets in all the light when it's not. Um, I, I mean, I sort of see what she's saying, but it just looks cool the way it blinks on and off. So that's great. Um, obviously I got plenty of room. Now let's see how I fit behind me and then we'll take a look at the cargo space, which is also pretty good here in the Lexus RZ450. All right, so if I'm getting in here, keep in mind that the seat has motored back because the car is currently turned off, uh, mainly because I'm in a hurry and I paired it to my phone and I don't want it to disconnect everything. Um, I can fit behind myself, not with a ton of room, but I can. Materials back here are great. Everything feels phenomenal. You do get heated outboard seats as well as some extra USB-C chargers. This thing actually has a lot of USB-C chargers. There's like a couple up front, uh, three USB-C USB-C chargers up front, heated and cooled seats up there, and then two more back here with heated seats on the outboard. So it's not bad. Headroom is pretty good considering the Magic Sky since it's not a like collapsible sunroof. A collapsible sunroof, what am I saying? It's not a retractable sunroof, doesn't collapse. That wouldn't make any sense. Although maybe a really bad version would, but let's not go there. Um, but like, yeah, I've got a decent amount of space. I got a bunch of pollen on my pants from when I was going around the car and leaning against it. Um, it's not bad on space, okay? And, and you're gonna see in a second, cargo space is actually quite good for this size of vehicle. But I think the problem is, if you're using this as just day-to-day -day transportation and taking your kids places, that's great, but do you really want your daily errands to rob you of so much range? You pretty much absolutely have to have a 240 charger at home. I know I keep sort of beating this horse to death, but like, you just have to have a way to keep this thing charged and public charging, aside from the usual problems that people can have with public charging, it's not drawing enough fast enough from public charging to regain the range that you need. And so if you're using this interior space and you're driving the family places, that does put this weird compromise on things. Yes, around town it's great, but if you can't recharge it, it's only good for like one afternoon and then you're done. You have to charge overnight. Oh, by the way, in case I didn't mention it when I was sitting in the vehicle, I'm almost six foot six. And so when you see me sitting behind me, that's why I'm so tight. I'm almost six foot six, so space is a little bit limited. So if you were something like five nine or whatever, you'd be fine. Now, keeping that in mind that I'm over six five, um, this area here is pretty good. This is like 34 cubic feet of car 
cargo space. Um, that's not bad and the seats can fold. So like you can take out this luggage cover and this is a pretty generous amount of cargo space. But here's the irony and here's where a company like Genesis, I think makes a little bit smarter trade off with the GV60. The GV60 has actually a more spacious back seat and less cargo space. It's got like 10 cubic feet less cargo space and way higher range and much faster recharging. So my question is, Lexus, why are you giving us so much cargo space when this vehicle can't go very far? Like, what are you gonna do with this cargo space? Like, I have two kids who play sports and I don't need this much space to take their sports stuff. This would be enough space for us to make the trip to New Orleans we just made. But like, this car could never do something like this. This car can barely kind of finish your whole day's worth of going to work and running errands and stuff like that without needing a full recharge. So why do I have all this space in the back? Like, what's it for? And I think that brings me to what I said at the beginning of the video missed opportunities. Yeah, see, I wanted to like this a lot. In fact, I do like this if you take the range issues out of the equation. I think there is a lot of potential here. There is a ton of potential as a Lexus EV. In fact, and I said this in the Genesis G80 review, but honestly, I might mean it even more in terms of Lexus. An EV Lexus sort of fulfills everything that the brand is kind of known for. Like it sort of fits the brand's identity in a way that makes absolute perfect sense. Lexus is known for luxury, reliability, quietness, comfort. Um, I would even say a dose of practicality. And you know, there's that like build quality thing where it's like you buy a Lexus long term. You lease, I mean, let's be honest, you lease a German luxury car, but you buy the Lexus, right? And so as an EV, a Lexus makes perfect sense. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's fast, and then you build in all the other stuff and you have kind of what I would consider to be the ultimate Lexus. And so the RZ shows that like there is promise here, there is potential here, there is a path forward for Lexus in this EV range, in this EV market. But unfortunately, the RZ falls super short, like way too short, like mega short of that goal. I said earlier that this thing costs $67,000. It's fully loaded. You get the Mark Levinson heated and cooled seats. You get all the good things, everything that you could want on this with the Magic Sky roof, the 20 inch wheels, it looks great, optional paint. It is a fantastic all around luxury SUV. I would even say that there's things about this from a styling and a driving standpoint that I liked more about than the RX Hybrid, right? But at $67,000, you're getting into some competition with the Ionic Twins, Genesis GV60, and you're not far off that G80 we had, it was 82 and it was fully loaded, but you could get it for less. Like, you're getting into this space where there are truly excellent EVs. Obviously, the gorilla in the room is Tesla. Tesla, with their supercharger network, is that sort of gorilla or elephant gorilla elephant in the room, whichever one you want to say. And you could argue that this has a nicer interior, better build quality and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're buying an EV, range matters more than anything other than recharge speed. And you could take a vehicle, especially not on the Tesla supercharger network, as it has a super fast recharge speed. But this you absolutely have to have a 240 at home. You absolutely have to recharge every single day. And you are restricted by the public chargers you can access because the recharge rate is so slow compared to some of those other competitors. So I just feel like this thing is so severely compromised in that way that like it only makes sense for a very small fraction of people. Like here in Atlanta, we have decent charging options. They're not the best, but they're not the worst. And I feel like you would absolutely have to have another significantly like larger or at least equal size car for this to make any sense. Our family of four, for example, Ella's going to college next year. It's just gonna be me and Megan and Hallie at home. For our family of four, size-wise, this is great. There's no trouble at all but it could never ever be our only car. We would have to have a completely separate car to go on road trips and vacations, which we love to do. So take that into consideration. There is so much to like about this thing that it is so close to being a EV Lexus, the one that we kind of would want and dream of. I think the way forward is positive. The, the future is bright for Lexus in this segment, in this market segment, if EVs kind of come back in fashion, a little bit down right now. Because of that, I just don't think for very, well, 
for exception of very few of you, that the RZ450E would make a whole lot of sense. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think about the styling, honestly. I'm seriously asking that. Let me know what you think about the styling. I think it looks kind of good. Like this is kind of a cool version of the Lexus styling. I like the interior materials. I would love to know what you think about the styling of the interior because I bet a lot of you are going to be like, boring, but the materials are fantastic. So trust in that. And then let me know what you think about that range and recharge thing. Would you even consider this? I really want to know in the comments. I really want to know, would you even consider this knowing those limitations on both range and recharge speed? And if not, why? What would you take over this at $67,000? Let me know. Tune in next time, ring the bell, like, subscribe, all the good things, and I'll bring Megan back when I know she won't be utterly negative about a particular vehicle. This one had no chance. All right, we'll see you next time.